Hi everyone, my name is Daniela. For those who don't know me, I am an incoming medical student at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. I went to college also at Johns Hopkins University. I am here to help you get into medical school. I'm going to dedicate this video today to reading my personal statement. I think it's a great way to get an example of you know, the way that I spoke about my motivation for medicine, but let's just keep in mind that this is not a format or a cookie cutter example of how you should write your personal statement. Everybody has different stories for why they want to become a doctor. And I think it's really, really important to stay true to yourself and your passions and your own voice when it comes to writing your personal statement. So without further ado, I hope you find this helpful and uh, let's just get right to it. I decided to talk about my dancing and start the story with me performing on stage. So we'll start reading. The curtains opened, revealing my shadow standing deep into stage back. Avoiding the spotlight with uncoordinated darting motions, I intentionally deviated from the norms of dancing full out on stage to portray a timidity reminiscent of the stage fright I experienced at my first performance at the age of five. Driven by the crescendo of the instrumental music, I effortlessly galloped across the stage into a grand jeté. This leap defied gravity and the human anatomical confines to symbolize my newfound confidence. Each metatarsal harmoniously absorbed its share of the shock as I juxtaposed the explosive jump with a virtually silent, effortless landing. As the stage lights dimmed, the audience burst into applause, confirming my unorthodox performance was universally well received. Through movement alone, I communicated and normalized an uplifting story about overcoming self-doubt, a lesson that has carried me on my journey as a pre-medical student. So this last sentence is my personal takeaway and my transition onto the next part of my essay. It shows them that I have a, an interesting side of myself besides medicine, right? I dedicate myself to a hobby. And at the same token, I kind of draw a parallel to the fact that I went through something where I doubted myself a little bit. And we'll talk about that in the next paragraph. But it really sets everything up to show how I used movement and a creative outlet to go through some more difficult times in my life. Without shedding a negative light, I talked about a way that I coped with stressful situations. On to my next paragraph. So we start talking about uh, my pre-medical journey, right? So coming next, we have the transition into the paragraph. I say, my family's arduous journey out of poverty after immigrating to the United States did little to blunt the impact of my own personal challenge with self-doubt. So that's, again, me going back into self-doubt, my dance performance, how I overcame that. I'm now going into what that was for me uh, in specific detail. So it wasn't until my first year at Johns Hopkins University that I was prompted to adapt to life far from home and earn my place at this elite institution. Following my initial struggle with rigorous chemistry courses, I sought out a research position to supplement my coursework with hands-on biochemistry training. My experience as a student researcher provided me the necessary mentorship and critical thinking to succeed at Johns Hopkins. So there you go. I'm detailing what that challenge that I had to overcome was, highlighting the scientific innovation portion of my essay. There are some grades that were not ideal in my record. So I think it for me as an applicant, it was important to really highlight that in a positive way. Don't shy away from talking about my weaknesses because it made me the person I am today. And ultimately, I'm better for it. And I explain why. Moving on. I began my independent research under Dr. Anderson where I studied the mechanism of action for a calmodulin kinase, CAMK2. CAMK2 is vital for the proper function of multiple organ systems, but under oxidative stress, it becomes dysregulated and leads to arrhythmia. I learned that oxidative stress could result from unhealthy lifestyle choices, such as poor diet and alcohol consumption, and became fascinated with the pervasiveness of these choices in promoting illness. So that's a personal takeaway that is what the research meant to me deeper than just performing experiments and learning chemistry, I learned something about my motivation for medicine. Now, the next sentence says, 
Through personalized education, I hope to empower patients to understand their health and optimize their body's function for a longer health span using lifestyle interventions. So that's my quote unquote as a physician statement. So previously I said my personal takeaway, the big picture moment from my research, and then I took that to the next level and said how that influenced the way that I want to practice medicine. Notice I also hinted at my background. I am an immigrant. I had a lot of challenges growing up, but I highlighted that my biggest point of growth was when I went to Hopkins and I had to overcome my challenge with self-doubt as a pre-medical student. And now I am who I am today. Next, we have the third paragraph. So now we're going to talk about, you know, I hinted at my immigration story in the second paragraph, and now we're going to kind of delve into that and really talk about the role of language and empowering people through language. All right. So transitioning into this next paragraph, I say, reframing complex concepts in understandable terms is familiar to me as I was my family's English translator since our immigration from Cuba at the age of six. Despite my father's success as a physician in Cuba, we lived in severe poverty, prompting us to flee as political refugees to Chile. Six years later, we arrived in Miami, where I struggled to learn English after repeatedly moving and adapting to three elementary schools. Once I was ready to begin my role as a family's English translator, I translated passages from the USMLE books for my father before I knew how to perform long division. It was clear to me that our future rested on his performance on these board exams. My job as my family's translator elucidated the role of language in providing people with the tools to become self-sufficient, allowing them to exploit their full potential. Language equals power. That's kind of my, my big key theme of this program. I want to serve as a guide for patients as they acquire the knowledge to make informed health decisions. So this is one of the whys of why I want to practice medicine, right? I want to be that guide for patients as they navigate really complicated health decisions, diagnoses, treatment plans. I want to be there every step of the way, like I was for my family in translating for them and guiding them through the immigration process and this new system, new country. That's kind of equivalent to you guiding patients through unfamiliar diagnoses. Medicine is like another language. You know, if you didn't study it, it's really confusing. And in many ways, I will continue to be a translator for patients, even if I speak their same language, because I will be explaining their own health to them in terms that they will understand and that is meaningful to them to take home with them. The next paragraph, I transition from talking about language in my family and my upbringing, to then giving a concrete example of me using this concept in a healthcare setting, right? So I say, motivated to address language barriers in a healthcare setting, I sought out an opportunity to optimize the outreach efforts of Centro Sol, a Johns Hopkins Spanish health advocacy and vaccine clinic. I conducted phone interviews with the local Latinx population to improve COVID health literacy, which is how I met Jorge, a Honduran immigrant. With no English proficiency, Jorge received COVID data through local word of mouth. Having experienced a language barrier firsthand, I understood how limited Spanish public health information deterred him from voluntarily opting for a vaccine with potential side effects. So that's me showing how I went through empathizing with this patient, right? This is the paragraph that highlights my cultural competency and it highlights my compassionate and empathetic side. So I've already talked about my research. That's my science aspect. And now I want to balance that with this paragraph talking about my compassionate side. I urged him to reconsider vaccination from a different lens by addressing the rumors of the side effects. Our shared Latinx experience opened the door to candid conversation and allowed me to deliver valuable information, empowering Jorge to trust in medicine. So that was my personal takeaway, how that impacted Jorge and how that impacted me. What did I learn about that? I reflected on that experience and I realized, yes, we shared an identity, but more importantly, I was able to identify what Jorge needed to hear and how he needed to hear it in order for it to make a difference in his life and his choices. All right. So next I say, I want to treat patients who are disproportionately affected by chronic illness by mending their broken trust in medical institutions to correct inequities in healthcare access. 
I'm going that step further. Again, how do I want to do medicine? How do I want to treat patients? How does this experience affect the way that I want to treat patients? Next, I say, even further, as a physician, I hope to alleviate my patients' concerns and promote informed health decisions by disseminating unequivocal scientific data with patience and empathy. So that's what I do with Jorge, right? But I think I really capitalize on, again, like I said, understanding medical information is like a new language, all right? So disseminating this scientific data with patience and empathy is crucial for it to actually make a difference in patients' lives and for them to learn from that, right? They need to be able to grasp that information in a digestible manner that they can then use to impact their own lives, right? So the last paragraph, my conclusion, I really like put everything together here. So let's get right to it. I say, I approached my journey as a pre-medical student with the work ethic and resiliency that my parents ingrained in me, allowing me to transition from political refugee to college graduate. Applying my metabolism research background and communicative dexterity, I plan to simplify complex medical concepts, encouraging patients to actively participate in the prevention and management of their chronic illnesses. So that's me touching back on the science aspect of my essay, my research, right? But then again, notice how I bring in their communicative dexterity. I talk about the fact that I really understood the role of language, my experience with my family as a translator, and then my experience with Jorge. I really communicate um, both of those ideas, metabolism research, along with my communication skills, in order to simplify medical concepts to patients, right? So the next sentence reads, Through our similar life experiences, I'm able to empathize with patients like Jorge, allowing me to form trusting connections and prescribe information to overcome skepticism in medicine. So that shows my compassionate side. It shows that, you know, Jorge didn't want to get the COVID vaccination, but it wasn't because he was ignorant. It was because he didn't have the tools to access the medical information required to understand the need for this vaccine. And quite honestly, he was scared right? So I was able to understand that from a different perspective. And like I say, quote unquote, prescribe the information that he needed in order to overcome that skepticism and make informed health decisions. So next I say, I intend to employ my culturally nuanced public health education to connect with a multilingual, diverse patient population and empower patients to procure positive health outcomes. That shows a little bit of my leadership side. Um, That's interwoven throughout the entire essay. um, But I think it really shows that I want to be a guiding force for patients. I want to lead them to positive health outcomes, right? So the last sentence reads, throughout my life, my role has evolved from translator to Latinx public health advocate, preparing me for my future role as a physician educator. And that is my last big as a physician statement, right? Everything in one sentence. I was a translator for my family. I have a passion for Latinx health and uh, diverse patient populations and their equitable access to health care. And ultimately, I see the physician as an advocate, as an educator, as a mentor, somebody to guide you through your health, right? It's simple. It's concise to the point. Oftentimes, we try to complicate the message. Your essay should be a genuine, true why medicine, right? So go back to the basics. Don't be afraid to say the word physician, doctor, healthcare. Be purposeful and intentional about this essay. I say as a physician a bunch of times on this essay. In every single paragraph, I think I say the word physician because I don't want there to be a question about what I want to do. Show, not tell, but at the same time, don't be elusive about it. Be clear and to the point when it comes to drawing the connections between your experiences and your desire to become a doctor. If you have any questions, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I am more than happy to walk you through your own personal statements and help you craft your story. I am here as your guide. You can reach out to me via email or I have my Instagram linked down below as well. Best of luck to all of you and I wish you all the best in this application cycle or whenever it is that you're watching this video. Positive vibes.